Hello, this is Joanne, and today I've got a bit of a different video coming for you. This is a, a homeschool video about how I plan and record my uh, homeschooling for my son. I've been homeschooling my son. We are just starting our fifth year of homeschooling, so we've completed four full years of homeschooling. Um, he's never actually gone to public school. He's always been homeschooled, and he enjoys how we do it. Um, in our planning, I use a couple of different resources, um, the key one being Google Docs. Um, keeps everything in one place. I can access it whether it's on my phone, on my computer, from a public computer, whatever it is available for me. Um, and at the end of the school year, I can print off a hard copy and I've got my records of what we did for the previous year. Now, in my planning, I start with a, uh, a general education plan, this education plan. And this is actually my son's document here. And I start with kindergarten and I go all the way through to 12th grade. Now, am I really going to use this product in 12th grade? I don't know, but as of right now, that is what I'm leaning towards using. So I have an idea of what curriculums I'm using what year. Um, as you can see, it shows what I used for our kindergarten. Um, this is a note that I make for myself, how much I actually spent on this. Um, some of these, like Coda Kids, Robotics, that is not included in the price. Um, we paid for that as like a gift for, to our son. But the rest of the curriculum, this is what I spent for kindergarten. I spent a total of $20. Um, we did a lot of library books as well on top of these things. Um, so this year, we are starting our fourth grade book. We, uh, various books, library books, uh, handwriting. We use our Start Right. We're using Essentials in Writing for English in our grammar, Math Mammoth for our math, Real Science Odyssey for science, Story of the World for history, and then Coda Kid and Robotics for like an elective that he, uh, that is his interest. So here I've got an idea of what I'm planning to do for next year. Um, I'm planning to follow the four year cycle again and start again with ancients, but I'm not exactly sure what curriculum I'm going to use, so down here I have made some notes. I might use History Odyssey. I might use some of the Well-Trained Mind stuff, their recommendations. I might do a more living book, Charlene Mason approach. And then over here, sixth grade, um, Essentials in Writing offers in sixth grade their Essentials in Literature. And so that is something I will want to consider using in that year. I also have notes here that right now I use, you know, a satisfactory, outstanding. Um, next year I will switch to a percent grade. And then uh, I follow a different idea that, you know, middle school books are kind of dumbed down history books or high school books. So if you take a high school curriculum a lot and maybe take it a little slower, you can actually start it at, at an earlier age, as um, early as seventh grade. So that is a possibility that we could be starting some high school level courses at this point. And this would be our gap year, prep year, making sure we've got all the basics covered and are ready to do that. Everything, of course, depends on what we do. And then I've got a couple other tabs and those are more my notes of, okay, these are some ideas for living books curriculum, math curriculum, or um, how I lay things out. Over here is my actual, what I use on a day-to-day -day basis for planning and record keeping for our homeschool. Our, this tab is our journal tab. This is kind of like my overview of the whole year. As you can see, it's a calendar. And on the right side, I've got my terms or semesters broken up. And I keep a track count. I, I keep a count of how many days of school we have done 
in each semester. So uh, we started back at book work this week, but we did do some fun stuff last week that were physical education, field trips, and such. And so I still count those as school days because he is still getting an education. So um, we've done eight days of school so far this year. The uh, colored lines here, those represent weeks that I plan to take off. This year we're doing something different. Last year we did a four-day school week and about every two months took a week off. This year we're doing five days school weeks and about every six weeks we'll take a week off. So we'll take a week off in August, another one in September, another one in October, November, the week of Thanksgiving, we'll take the whole week off. At Christmas time, we'll take three weeks and a little bit off. Um, February, March, we'll take a week and a, a little bit more because we've got the homeschool convention here in Rogers. I put it on my calendar to remember to take it off. Last year I forgot to do that and then I had to uh, rework my calendar at the last minute. Um, and then end of June, we usually try and take about a month off, end of June, early July, um, give or take. We change things as needed. That's the great thing about this is it's a plan, but uh, nothing is set in stone. If two more weeks in, we decide, you know, this five days doesn't work, let's go back to four day school week. I can take my calendar, I can rework it and make it work. However, as long as I meet my goal of 180 days of school, it doesn't matter how it is. I try don't necessarily try and do 180 days of book work because even in the public schools they don't do a full 180 days of book work. They lose time for assemblies, special events, field trips. So if they can count those, so can we as homeschoolers. Next tab here is my lesson plan. As you can see, I've got a date and my various subjects that we're covering and I've got shorthand here. I'm not going to write out Math Mammoth, um, Essentials in Writing, Real Science Odyssey, Story of the World. I keep it very simple. Otherwise, my journal page, these boxes become ginormous and it's not easily readable. Whereas if I keep it small, I know what it is and I have another tab that lists out the full curriculum name so that if I look back and I'm say MM3B chapter 7 test, what was that? I can go over to my curriculum list and say, oh, that was Math Mammoth. So um, as you can see, I have dates for next week, but beyond that, I have do not have dates written down. So I have an idea of what I'm going to do, but I don't tie myself down. So if we have a sick day, we can just take a sick day. We don't have to stress about doing it. Um, things like trail life, that happens every Monday. I've put it in here because it's still an educational activity. If I come down further in my list, I've got some here. That should not be colored. Um, this is the end of that subject. So we're just over halfway through third grade math and that's fine. He's taken a little bit longer. Once he, he gets solid on it, I'm sure he'll catch up and if not, so be it. I'm not going to stress about it. We'll work at his pace. By age, technically he would be going into third grade this year, but I had chosen to start him early. So he, if he's only halfway through third grade, that's fine. We, we'll make it work. But so I have a this here so about a week before it I'll start to see it and so I'll know oh I need to pull out that curriculum I might need to print stuff in the case of math mammoth I need to print the pages for this um, make sure I have all my equipment when it comes to things like science what equipment do I need um, as I go down I think, yes, so end of fourth grade, or the first half of fourth grade. So that lets me know 
okay, the Math Mammoth is in two booklets, so I've finished the first one. I need to print the second one. And then the end of my English. And how we work it is typically when we finish a curriculum, I've by then I've already actually ordered. And so I would just move into Essentials in Writing 5. Or if I'm going to switch it up, that would be the time I switch it up. Same with my Science and History. So as you can see, about 155 days. Usually we will get at least that many days of school done. Um, if not, last year we had, I think, two or three weeks. And we just started early. So technically, we're already a couple of weeks into fourth grade. So if we go to 170 days, that's fine. Um, I would ha just have started the next curriculum. And of course, there's that one month break. And then we pick it right back up. There's not a lot of gap because I haven't taken two whole months off. My next tab here is my reading log. Uh, start date. This is a book he started last end of last year and hasn't finished. I'll put the end date when he does. I have the title, the author, number of pages. And then I like to track the AR level and Lexile. This one I couldn't find a Lexile number for, so I just have the AR level. And some books don't have any of the above. But this gives me a list of what books he's read, how many pages. And so I get an overview of, okay, he's done this many books. Like Kindergarten, the really easy, simple books, he did like 100 books, over 100 books. Last year, we have started getting more into the chapter books, and so... He only did about 30 books, but that's fine. Uh, you know, he's reading, he's making progress. Then I have a report card. Um, my grading scale right now is just the outstanding, satisfactory, needs improvement, incomplete. Uh, I don't think I've ever did an N or an I. And then I keep track of the number of days of attendance. And typically, since I include field trip days and other educational activities in our count, we do well over 180 days of school in a year. Because when we do field trip, or when we take breaks, a lot of times we will go do museums or do fun activities that are still educational. And then my last tab here is my curriculum tab, and this just lists what I am using this year um, incomplete complete so if I need to look back from my lesson plan or journal I can see oh MM that's math mammoth EIW that's essentials in writing so I have that now uh, at the end of the school year my lesson plan is basically empty whatever I have left over I copy into my uh, next year's and so I just pick up right where I left off um, and things are some things are already well planned out if you look down here for uh, math I go all the th way through the end of fourth grade math which we probably won't get to that's 236 or 235 lessons beyond what we've already done we're not going to get there but I can just take what I haven't done and just copy it over to next year's lesson plan and then I actually will delete this lesson plan so I will keep my journal reading log report card and curriculum and I print those off and that becomes my records of what we did for that year and uh, I can s easily go back and see what we've done and the progress he's made and that is my simple, at least what I think is simple, easy way of uh, keeping my records. And if you're interested, I am glad to share uh, a blank one of these forms. Each year I just update the calendar with, you know, July starts on whatever day, and I just update the numbers. So if you're interested, let me know, and I'd be glad to share this document with you.